What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel for Webflow Pros. If you're new here, smash that subscribe button below so you never miss out on a future tutorial. The idea for this tutorial actually comes from Brian, who asked for a tutorial on BEM naming conventions. Now, if you're not familiar with that, that's just a fancy way to say how we stay organized when naming our classes. So if you're not using that, you'll often run into a situation like this where you'll have image two, image three, image four. You'll have a bunch of classes that aren't properly named and that are very hard to stay organized and it gets out of hand quickly. So I found a good combination for BEM. Everyone pretty much does it slightly differently, but the principle stays the same. And that's that B stands for block, E stands for element, and M stands for modifier. So if we look at this hero, for instance, this entire hero section would be our block or our hero. Anything inside that would be an element. So if we had a headline, it would be hero underscore underscore headline or hero underscore underscore button or whatever that element is. So we know that that element belongs to the hero. And the modifier is written in its own way. That's a combo class. So anything we add on to either the block or the element to change the way it looks and that's our modifier. It's written in a different way. So I use a combination of the method found on Webflow's blog and also the method found on the BEM website. I found that the two of those uh, work really well together and I'll show you why because the way Webflow handles classes can be a little bit different. So we're gonna dive in and just start renaming classes on an existing project that doesn't really have proper class naming. And if we look at this entire nav over here on the left, this is pretty much a block and it has different elements inside it. So whenever you're naming classes in Webflow, you don't wanna use any capital letters or any spaces. The reason for that is when you publish your site, Webflow converts any capitals to lowercase, any spaces to dashes. So if you're referencing this class in your CSS or JavaScript, um, it could break your code because the class name changes on the published site. So for best practices, um, all lowercase and no spaces. So if this whole thing is our block, we'll just start by the name of it and we will call it nav. You can call it whatever you like. You can call it nav var, um, but because we're chaining these class names and we're using it in other places, the shorter, the better. So as long as you understand what it is, it's short and concise, then you're good with a name there. So I'll call this nav. Now anything inside it is an element inside this block. So this logo, for instance, Maybe I'll have another logo in the footer. Maybe I'll have a logo grid. That's when it gets out of hand with logo one, logo two, logo three. To solve for that, we're just gonna start by naming it the block name that we have here. So this is nav, then do two underscores, and then the name of the element. This element is a logo. So now we know this is nav that belongs, this is a logo that belongs to the nav. It's in the nav and this also speeds up your workflow because you're not having to think of new class names or reinvent the wheel every time you go to name a new element. You can pretty much just know once you have that first block defined how to name every element inside of it. This is an image, but I may have multiple images inside my nav, so I may want to get a little bit more specific. So I'll call this nav underscore underscore, and then I'll call it um, you want to stay as concise as possible. So I'll just abbreviate IMG. Uh, dash logo. So this is an element image logo um, that's inside my nav and it's a totally separate element even though it's inside this logo link it's a totally different element than the logo link itself. They're two pieces that belong to the nav. So if we look at this next part which is has a lot to it. It has album art, it has uh, time, title, and then there's different paragraphs. There's also a paragraph below here in the nav um, it can start to get confusing. We could start to chain this maybe too much. Maybe this is the time, but maybe this is the time text. So it would be nav underscore time text, time text uh, bar, and it could get too long. So really it's up to you when you wanna start a new component. But usually if there's a lot of elements and this is one piece that's inside uh, another block, this is where I would start a new block here. So instead of starting it with nav, I'm just gonna call it um, album. So album right here. And then anything inside that belongs to the album now. So this would be uh, album and then underscore uh, image, IMG. So this is an element oh, and two underscores there. 
This is an element belonging to the album component. And then same with the titles, same with the bar. So maybe this nav time bar is now an album bar. And it would be just like this, album underscore bar. Um, so then this piece, this box, I may, because it doesn't have a lot in it, I may want to just make it a box inside of the nav. So maybe it just belongs to the nav as a whole. So this would be um, nav underscore, and then we'll just call it um, message. And then this right here, the text inside it would be nav underscore underscore message dash text. It's its own element. Um, but it's sibling, the sibling of nav message is the whole album um, info, which I realized this still needed to be named. So this is actually my root parent. Um, this would be the thing that's the actual album. And this inside of it is a container inside the album. So this would be album underscore underscore container. And then the whole parent, which is this one here, would be the actual album div. Um, if that makes sense. So that's the start of sort of how we name things. Now, you may have blocks that you want to use in other places of the site. So like, for instance, here, this would be my controls div. Um, and then anything inside it, this button isn't only being used inside the controls div. It's also being used down here, further on down the site with a combo class to make it larger. So this right here, I can just make it its own block. Um, even though it lives inside a block, it can be a block nested in a block. Um, so this maybe would be, um, maybe it could be our button, uh, the whole thing. And then inside the button, we would have the button underscore underscore link. And then inside there, this is the uh, fill color of the button. So this would be button underscore underscore fill. And these are all just elements inside the overall button block. Um, so it starts to make sense uh, when you lay it out this way. Button underscore underscore circle. And then this last one would be button underscore underscore icon. So you start to get a hang of um, just how to name these things. Uh, this would be button underscore underscore text. Cool. And then whenever we have a combo class, so like this, um, let's see if I can find an example of a combo class. This one here is a color. Um, so our combo classes, we write a little bit differently. And the reason we do that is so that we know that this is a combo class and not a main class. Um, so I'll just go ahead, rename this. We start all combo classes with the word is, I-S, then two dashes, and then the name of the combo class. So this would be yellow, and um, this one over here would be is dash dash blue. So that's how we name our combo classes. Um, and I believe right now, if I go to add that blue back in, you'll see it's appearing up at the top. So this is a local class. Everything below here is a global class. And a local class only applies to this one element. So if I were to come over to this album container and I were to apply that is dash dash blue, you'll notice there's no uh, is blue class applied to this container yet. So that's because this uh, local class only applies to that particular button circle class. It doesn't apply to anything else. So if you wanna create a global class, you're gonna need an empty div or some item that doesn't have any class on it. Then you can do is dash dash blue or whatever you want your class to be. Apply a background color to there. And now this is a global class that you can apply on any other class. So if I delete this combo class now, go back to the album container and I start to type is dash dash blue, you'll see it's appearing under this global combo class. So now I can apply it there. I can apply it to anything I want to apply it to. And this is a global class that I can reuse on any other element. Um, so that's helpful to know because 
it all depends on your intent. If you want to reuse this blue background class on a bunch of different elements, like maybe this whole section, um, maybe this down here, then I would create that as a global class on an empty div. Um, but there are instances where maybe you only want to apply um, something to just the one class, like say this button, I only want it to change it in the hero. And so I would do is dash dash hero, and then I can change anything about the way that this one particular uh, button or fill color works. Maybe I change its radius or something. Um, now I can reuse that is hero class on something else. Um, like maybe this right here is dash dash hero. So this isn't actually changing the radius. Uh, Webflow is treating it almost like a brand new class that's never been added before because it's never been added to this main class. So now I could do something else, like maybe I change, use it to change a background color or something. Um, so basically this is a fresh new class that's totally unrelated to the is hero applied to this class because it's a local class, not a global class. So feel free to use those um, pretty much however you prefer, but know the difference between the two and when to use each is totally up to you and what you're trying to achieve there. So that's basically how you would go about naming some of these classes, how you go about writing combo classes, and how to stay organized with naming your different classes in Webflow. I hope this video was helpful. Actually, if this content has helped you, uh, please consider becoming a Patreon. You can fill out the link below, and I'm working on building up the community for Patreon, so we'll actually have some gated resources available right now that you can have access to, just as a special thank you to those of you who support this channel, allowing more content to be produced. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful, and I'll catch you in the next video. Goodbye.